Today on A Few Good Minutes, I'm joined by Sean Men. He is the Executive Director of the Ontario Undergr Undergraduate uh, Student Alliance, or also known as USA. Welcome to the show, Sean. Oh, thanks for having me. So a lot of students might not be familiar with uh, what USA is, so why don't you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, absolutely. So USA is a provincial advocacy or organization. We represent uh, seven, seven student associations across the province, Brock included. Pretty much our job is just to take your concerns and take it to the provincial level. So we lobby MPPs at Queen's Park, uh, the senior civil service, the people in the ministry that kind of oversees education on pretty much everything to do with student life. What are some of your lobbying priorities this year? Um, teaching and learning is a big one. I think students are realizing that they're paying more for their education and they might be getting a little bit less out of it. So we're looking at some ways that we can improve the experience and whether that's through better classrooms, better classroom methods, um, teaching teachers to be more effective. Uh, we're looking at open educational resources, which are basically free online journals and textbooks that can be a cheap and I think probably easier to use alternative to um, Textbooks as we understand them, I mean textbooks cost $800 to $1,000 a year for students, yeah. so the more free resources we can get and the more faculty using those that we can get, the better off we are. So tuition is also a big issue. What is USA's position on tuition? Well, we think tuition is too high, um, <laughs> and probably unsurprisingly. I think a lot of students don't realize that it's actually regulated and universities can't go beyond that and would like to. So our first priority is making sure that it stays regulated. Uh, once this current framework is up for negotiation, we're going to be looking for a f pretty hard for a freeze or a reduction um, in order to get back into what we think is a fair cost sharing model. Based on your experience, how likely do you think a tuition freeze would be? Having spoken to a couple of universities, I know universities are actually planning for it to be lower, so I think our advocacy has been kind of successful in um, creating an understanding that the government has to do something about it and might once they have more resources. So I think it's probably pretty good that we'll see less than the current framework in a couple of years. Can we expect any changes uh, in OSAP? Um, actually, we're always constantly improving OSAP. OSAP is such a big beast with so many moving parts that a lot of people don't see the small improvements that we're making for it. I think uh, my favorite example recently is the um, Students with Dependents Grant. So there's a grant that helps cover child care for students. It used to be one of the world's worst programs. I think like 24 students took advantage of it. But we worked with OSAP to improve the eligibility criteria and make it kind of automatic to get into this year. And now 4,200 students were on it. So our next fight is making sure that there's more money available. Um, we're also working uh, with them to try to eliminate interest. We crunched some numbers for them. And it's actually surprisingly cost effective uh, to get rid of interest on loans, which I think would make a huge benefit for students. Um, we're looking to expand the Ontario tuition grant so you get four years of eligibility regardless of when you left high school. USA was a part of implementing the 30% tuition grant. Yeah. Uh, one of the problems, of course, though, is that all students aren't eligible for yeah. it. Is this something that USA is working on? And so we're really hoping that the four years of eligibility regardless thing uh, will be helpful, um, but we're always looking to extend it to groups that take a little bit longer. So, um, students with disabilities or Aboriginal students. USA works on a number of campaigns throughout the year, and you visit a lot of campuses. Uh, what campaigns is USA working on this year? Uh, actually, we're pretty excited about our campaign this year. Um, the OSAP Living Allowance, and this is something I should have mentioned in OSAP Improvements, is pretty low. So this year, what we're trying to do is. Um, we're going to get some students to participate in living strictly on the OSAP living allowance for a couple of weeks and show that it's not super easy to live on 10 bucks a day for food. Does USA have any relationship with CASA at all? Yeah, actually we have a pretty strong uh, relationship with CASA. We have significant and overlapping members, which obviously means that we're, we're always kept abreast of what's going on. But occasionally you come across some stuff at the provincial level that bumps up against the federal level. Aboriginal education is largely handled at the federal level, so we get a lot of concerns from Aboriginal students, and then we can kick it up to CASA, or we can help CASA with its federal advocacy. 60% uh, of your student loan comes from the federal government, so it's really, really helpful for us um, to be able to work with them to make sure that that half of the student loan is doing its job as well. USA has generally a good relationship with the Liberal government. How do you think USA's lobbying would change um, given a change in government? But we actually have very, very strong relationships with um, both opposition parties. Uh, we've met with the new critic of training colleges and universities, Garfield Dunlop, a couple times. He's very, very interested in our issues and has been a really good ally. Um, and then we're working with the NDP uh, to write two pieces of legislation. So. Mm -hmm. Our doors always open to everybody, and I think everybody's door is always open to us. And that's those are important relationships to cultivate, because um, we we're not always going to agree with the government, and sometimes we have to rely on the opposition to make things happen. 
because a lot of students don't know about USA, they don't know about the opportunities there are to get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, how can the average student get involved in USA? We rely on tabling a lot for students to set our, set our priorities for us, and so a lot of students are telling us directly what they want us to be working on, and if we're not, we take it pretty seriously. Um, we also have a policy conference twice a year, um, which I know you've been to, and that's a really direct chance for students to kind of work on our policy, and policy is really important in USA because I can't say it unless it's in policy, and the policy is written by students um, twice a year over the course of a couple weekends. Well, thanks a lot for coming on the show, Sean. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thanks for having me. If you want to learn more about USA, you can visit their website at www.usa.ca.